Okay, so in this video, I'm going to have a look at limits and I'm going to have a look at the basic idea of what limits are and we look at calculating um, the limits of, uh, of a function at different x values. So let's have a look at a basic idea of what limits are first of all. Um, let's say we have this guy here and he's walking uh, in this direction here towards a wall and the wall is exactly two meters away. Now he's going to just take um, half the distance each time. So he's going to walk uh, one meter first of all and then he's going to walk half that distance again which is half a meter then he's going to walk half that distance again which is quarter of a meter uh, and so on um, so you can see what's happening here we have he, he travels a distance of one plus a half plus a quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on now if you continue that on indefinitely he's going to um, I suppose theoretically he'll never actually reach the wall but um, what we say is that he will effectively be so close to the wall if you like that he'll be he'll be there at the wall if you like so I mean he'll effectively have traveled two meters so what we would say at the limit of this we write it LIM the limit of this series here um, if we add up all these distances that he's traveled is two meters I mean you could argue theoretically that he hasn't actually traveled the two meters but he'd be so close to it eventually if he goes on into infinity, if you like, that he'll have reached uh, two meters in distance. Okay, so that's the general idea of what limits are, but um, let's have a look at a um, an idea of limits uh, when it comes to functions. So let's have a look at, let's say we have this particular function here. Uh, it looks something like, let's say this here. It could be something like, uh, I don't know, y is equal to x squared or some, some version of that. But let's just um, take a little bit out of it here. Let's take this bit out here. So it's, we're going to say it's a non-continuous function. And I'll go into continuity of functions later on, but in a, in a separate video. But let's say it's not continuous here. So it's um, we'll take... Um, this particular x value here, let's say, has a y value, I don't know, let's say here. So anyway, uh, let's take this x value here as we will call it, we'll actually call it a. And we're going to look at the limit. This function here is called f of x. And we're going to look at the limit of this function, the limit of f of x as x approaches a. So the way we work this um, is we approach A from the left-hand side and we approach A from the right-hand side. And we see, do we, do we end up with the same value? And you can see here, just um, intuitively anyway, that we do, but let's have a look. We're going to look, first of all, at the, the limit of this function. The limit, we write it like this, the limit of f of x as x approaches A. And we're going to approach A from the left-hand side, so we write a little negative sign here. So we're going to approach it from this direction here. So we're going to look at these x values in that direction there. So I mean, you can see here, if we take this x value here, we get uh, this y value here. If we move a bit closer to a, uh, we get this value here, a little bit closer again. Uh, you can see what's happening. But eventually, anyway, we get so close to this value here as to make no difference if you like. So let's look at uh, approaching it from the uh, right hand side. So if we take this value here, you can see we'll get this y value here and so on. We're getting closer and closer as we approach as we approach a from the right hand side, you can see what's happening here in both directions. In both directions here, we're actually ending up with uh, approaching this 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 value here, which we call L, which is the limit of the function f of x as x approaches a. So we can see from the left hand side we're approaching L. And we can also see that from the right hand side, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right hand side we write a plus here uh, we get this this l here this this value of l here 
Now, f of a itself, f of a itself, um, we can see here I defined it as, as this value here. It's not actually L, it's some other value over here. But that doesn't matter. So long as you approach a from the left-hand side and the right-hand side and get the same value, uh, then the limit exists at a here. So let's try an actual example. Um, Let's see how we get on. So let's I'm going to define this particular function as f of x, and I'm going to it's going to be a piecewise function. So I'll show you what that is exactly. So we have um, 2x plus 2 uh, when x is less than zero, and we're going to say let's say x squared when x is greater than or equal to zero. So this this thing here is called a piecewise. A piecewise function. Uh, that just means that it's broken up into two or more different parts, depending on what your x values are. So let's just draw that first of all. Um, let's see, we have a y-axis anyway here, and we'll draw an x-axis along here. So this is x, this is y, and let's see, we'll go up in 0.5, let's say 0.5. 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and we'll go as far as 4. Down here, minus 0 0.5, minus 1, minus 1.5, and we'll say minus 2. And the y-axis, then we'll just go up in 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4. Say five here as well. Okay, so let's just draw this function then. Now, if we look at anything that's negative here, less than zero, we use this part of the function here, two x plus two. So let's do that first of all. Um, well, let's look at where it would cut the y axis or the x axis first of all. So if this was equal to zero, two x plus two is equal to zero. That would give me an x value of minus one. So we're going to look at cutting the x axis here. Now, if x was, were 0, we can see that the cutoff point between these two parts of the function here is 0. So if x um, was 0, uh, we would get um, y is equal to 2 here. But in this part of the function here, I'm just going to do a, a circle. I'm not going to fill it in, which means this part of the, the function doesn't exist here at this part. Uh, at this at this point here, y is equal to two. So I'm going to just join these two up. It's a straight line. It's a linear function. So that's this part of the function here. Now, so at zero, then at x is equal to zero, what's our y value? Well, we need to put it into this part of the function here. So it's uh, zero squared, which is just zero. So it does exist here. So I'm just going to put in a dot here and fill it in. And let's see if we put one in here, we'll get one squared, which is one. Put two in, you get four here. So you can see here it goes something like this. Okay, and it goes on like that. Now, this is our function, okay? <clears throat> so it's split into two parts here, if you like. So we're going to find two limits here. So let's, I'll just write those out. Um, now, first of all, I'm going to do the limit, let's say, the limit uh, of my function f of x as x approaches, well, let's say 2. Okay, well, let's say 2. So let's work on that. Um, now, what I need to do here is, so we're going to look at as x approaches 2. This is 2 here. So I'm going to approach 2 here from uh, the left-hand side. And then I'm going to approach 2 here from the right-hand side. I'm going to put actual values into my function and um, see what, what what kind of y values I get. So let's just do that. Um, now, so I'm going to do x and f of x here. So let's pick some x values here. Let's pick um, 0 0.5, uh, 1, 1.5, <clears throat> 1.75. And let's pick one fairly close to 2. Let's pick 1.99. Now, if I put those into my function, this part of my function, remember x is greater than 2, so I need to be, remember this part of the function, if we look back up here, 
anything uh, greater than zero, we need to use the x squared part of the function. So let's do that. So we need to square all of these x values. <clears throat> so if I square these, I'll get 0 0.25. I'll get 1, uh, 2.25. 1.75 squared is 3.06. And 1.99 is 3.96. So you can see that we're getting closer and closer here to what looks like four anyway so far. So let's do it. This is approaching two from uh, the left-hand side here. So let's look at approaching. So we're going to look at the limit now of f of x as x approaches two from the right-hand side. So again, I'll do x and f of x here. So let's pick some values to the right of two. So I'm going to pick four. <clears throat> I'm going to pick 3, uh, 2.5, 2.1, 2.01. Uh, now, so we need to square these. So 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 2.5 squared is 6.25, 2.1 squared is 4.41, <clears throat> and 2.01 squared is 4.04. .04. So you can see here, if we look at these two values, this one here and this one here, we've approached, we've gone from, we've gone very close to two here, very close to two here. We seem to be approaching four here. We seem to be approaching four here. And we can actually see that if we put two, if we did um, f of two, we actually get two squared, which is four. So you probably even saw that before I even started, but you get the idea anyway of the way you actually work these limits. Um, so we can see here that when we approach two from the left hand or from the right hand side on the left hand side, we get our limit here as uh, four. So what we would do is we'll just write that out formally. We would say that the limit uh, of f of x as x approaches two from the left hand side is equal to the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from the right hand side uh, therefore therefore the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 uh, is just equal to 4 and it, ex it exists in other words and it's equal to 4 okay so let's have a look at another limit then. Um, let's look at this part here where the, the graph um, splits. So we're going to have a look at the limit of this f of x, this function f of x, as x approaches 0. Let's see, does this exist? You probably instinctively or intuitively you can see that it doesn't, but uh, let's have a look. You can see, well, so what we're going to do here is look at the limit. This is part two here. So we're going to look at the limit of our function f of x as x approaches zero from both directions. So let's just look at this. We're not going to do a table as such here. We're just going to look at it. <clears throat> you can see here that as we approach, as we approach um, zero here from the left hand side, um, we're looking at these values here. So you're going to go this way, this way, and up here. You can see that really what we're doing here is we're approaching a y value of 2 here as we approach 0 on the x-axis from the left-hand side. What happens if we approach from the right-hand side? Well, if you take these values here, you can see here what value are we, we're not approaching 2 anymore. We're actually approaching 0. So we're approaching two different values on the y-axis as we approach zero from the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So just to write that out, um, the limit, the limit, the limit of f of x, the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the left hand side uh, is two. The limit as x approaches zero from the right hand side of f of x uh, is zero. So uh, the limit, 
the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the left is not the same as the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the right hand side therefore no limit exists no limit exists for f of x you know at x is equal to zero uh, that's it really for limits and introduction to limits if you like in the next video I'm going to have a look at a more formal definition for limits we're going to have a look at the epsilon delta definition for limits